So in this video, we're going to talk about properties of radicals. So let's talk about a radical. So when I take the nth root of some number a, so this expresses the nth root of a. So a number a in radical notation. Okay, so this is in the radical form. Later we'll talk about a different form. So the n is equal to the index. So if I ask what the index of the radical is, that's that n right there, okay? The a is the radicand. The radicand is a real number. Okay, remember that fancy R for real number? Okay, and then this little thingy right here, this is the radical sign. Okay, so what we use to have the radical sign going on there. Now, if I write something like this, the radical sign and I have 16, notice that there's no number right here. Okay. When there's not a number right there, it's understood by convention to be the square root. Square root of what? Of 16. That's what I would say there. And so the square root, what this means is, okay, what number do I multiply by itself that gives me the number 16? Well, if I multiply 4 by itself, I get 16. All right, so square root of 16 is 4. All right, so this is convention. Okay, when there's no n here, assume n equals 2. Okay? All right, so couple things. When n is even, okay, so like 2, so like 2, 4, 6, 8, even numbers, then what happens? The nth root of some number is only, I'll get it here in a second, only defined for a greater than or equal to zero, okay? However, now what do I mean by that? Okay, so if I take the square root of 16, I get four, right? What if I take the square root of negative 16? Well, a here, the a inside is no longer greater than or equal to zero, it's less than zero. So this is not a real number. Okay, so there's no solution here. Why is there no solution? You think about if n is equal to 2 here, what number can I multiply by itself to get negative 16? Well, negative 4 times negative 4, well, a negative and a negative make a positive 16, so that doesn't work. And then I know 4 times 4 is 16. So there's no two real numbers that I can multiply together and get negative 16. Therefore, there's no solution. Okay, so neither one of those work. <clears throat> okay, now instead of being n even, let's say when n is odd. So like 1, 3, 5, 7, so on. Okay, then what must be true? The nth root of the number a is defined for all real numbers a. Now, a fancy way to say for all real numbers a is a between negative infinity and infinity 
a fancier way to say it is A is an element of real numbers here. So, you know, if you want to just write out the English um, sentence, that's perfectly fine. All real numbers. Okay? So what do I mean here? So if I take like the cube root, okay, that's when n is odd. That's cube root of like negative 27. Okay? So does this work? Can I multiply, so a number three times itself, okay? So I multiply that number by itself three times and I get the negative 27, is that possible? Okay, 27, if I use a little factor tree, I know that's nine times three, okay? And then um, nine is three times three, so three, three, three makes 27. So how do I get this negative? Well, if I have negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, a negative and a negative make a positive 9. Positive 9 times a negative 3 gets me a negative 27. Bingo. So my answer to this is negative 3. Okay? That's, that's my answer there. Now, a little trick for you because sometimes it's a little hard to remember. But if you see you have an odd index and you have a negative number inside your radical, so the radicand is negative, then what you can do, if you see this and it helps you out, you can immediately take that negative to the outside. Okay? So I have negative cube root of this 27. And now once you have this positive inside, then you can work it you know, like you normally would, a positive number, okay? So, and, and that ends up working out, gets you negative, and then this is three, and that still gets you your negative three that you wanted. However, if you have the square root of negative 27, okay? You stop and you say, uh-oh, that is even. I see even. Wow, right? If that is even, then I say, can't do it. Okay? And there is no real solution. No real solution. Now, maybe there's a fake solution. We'll talk about that later. Okay? But if it's an even index, even if it was like fourth root of... Uh, negative 81, right? Okay. Doesn't matter, even though I can rewrite this as, well, 9, oh, that's a uh, 9 times 9 is 81, right? Okay. Um, and then 3 times 3 and 3 times 3. Well, how? what's the problem? I have this negative factor here, right? If I have a negative, 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 well, all those negatives are going to make it a positive. Because this makes a positive, that makes a positive, and then a positive times a positive is a positive. Okay? Oh, look at that cute little face we just made there. All right. So, um, this, neat, this also, no real solution if your index is even and the radicand is negative, all right? Um, let's try, let's try something like this. Cube root negative eight over 27. All right, first thing I look at, I say, okay, what's my index? My index is three. Okay, so that is odd. So an odd index means that this inside can be positive or negative. Now it's negative. So what can I do right off the bat? I'm going to pull this negative out front. I pull the negative out front. I have the cube root of 8 over 27. Okay? Now, cube root 8 divided by 27. Okay? So no matter what's inside here, since it's a cube root, um, any A inside is still... Um, possible that's not undefined okay so it's defined so what I can do is I can break this up 
I have the cube root of 8 divided by the cube root of 27. I can divide and conquer. I can split these up into two different radicals, okay, since each part is still real. So what does that get me? It gets me negative. Well, what do I multiply by itself three times? Well, 8 breaks down to 4 times 2. So once I get to 2, I can't break that down anymore, but I can break this 4 down to 2 times 2. And so I have 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. So I have this negative out front. And so then I have 2 divided by... Now, we found the cube root of 27 just a second ago. That's uh, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So the cube root is 3. So my answer is negative 2 thirds. Okay? Negative 2 thirds. Now, what about this here? Square root, negative 5 squared okay we have got to be careful you've got to be careful here because um, if you are not careful you might think oh the square root is the opposite of the square therefore my answer is negative five however okay however when I use order of operations PEMDAS Okay, parentheses first, then exponents, then multiply, divide, add, subtract. Okay, so what is going on? The most inside thing first is squaring negative 5. So negative 5 times negative 5. Okay, what's negative times a negative? That's a positive, so that's positive 25. What's square root of 25? That's actually 5. So how can I get... Two completely different answers here. Okay, let me show you a rule here. This, the nth root of a number times another number, is only equal to the nth root of that number times the nth root of that number if each piece, each is a real number okay so why did this one not work why did that not work well if you look at this and you divide it up okay what do you have you have square root of negative 5 squared which is a square root of negative 5 times negative 5 so if I divided it up I'd have the square root of negative 5 multiplied by square root of negative 5 well, what do I know about each of these pieces Neither one is not real, okay? So both of these are not real, okay? And since they are not real, therefore I can't use that jump from there to there, okay? It's not real, all right? However, if it was something like this, say it was like four squared, okay? So this would be square root of four times 4, which is, well, let's try it. Square root of 4 times the square root of 4. What do I know? This is a real number. That's equal to 2. This is a real number. That's equal to 2. So what is that equal to? 2 times 2, which is 4. So here would be the scenario where the square root, okay, that square root there um, is the opposite of that square, and then you just get, you know, your radican that you started with, okay? But you see how these are different, okay? Maybe, you know, this is a negative inside here and this one was a positive, okay? So very uh, nuanced, but you got to be careful, okay? If you're going to split it up, each has to be real, okay? So um, just be careful with that. All right, guys, good luck.